All right, it's an interesting idea. That's a group at the University of Minnesota bringing climate change to life with music. Now this is kind of a cool science that we talk about uh, every Wednesday with the editors of Scientific American. Uh, Mark Fischetti is with us this morning. Hey, Mark. Hi, how are you? So this is, this is if, not, if nothing else, an intriguing idea. So where did it come from? Yeah, the, uh, the, the composer is a geography, geography student and a climate change student up there, and he decided to take the data for the average temperature of the Northern Hemisphere starting in 1880 and run it all the way through to 2014, and then to compose music that went in step with the rising temperatures. So, okay, so let's just think about one of the things that this might do. Other than have some beautiful music, because I almost feel like we should just listen to it for the next three minutes, <laughs> but, but other than that, could it pause? Some people can't grasp numbers. Some people don't think in numbers. They think in colors. They think in pictures. They think in music. Do you think this takes climate change and reaches people like that? Yeah, I do. You know, we hear it all the time, right? Temperatures getting warmer, especially in the Arctic. We see the maps frequently, but um, this is much more visceral, I think, especially if you listen through the whole piece, which is about two and a half minutes. If you, the, the second violin is playing the Arctic temperature, if you will. And that tone goes up higher and higher, especially from 1990 on. So you get this sort of gut reaction to what you're hearing, which is really different than just numbers or maps. Yeah, and, and when I listen to it, it also almost creates like this heart beating drama, you know, as you go through the years. You know, you kind of feel that there's something that you need to be concerned about. It's interesting the way they did this. Yeah, you're right. I mean, they, they pace the notes very evenly. Each decade, there's a very short break. So you sort of take a get a breath and there's a next decade to get a breath. And by the time you hit 1950, you start to feel it. And when you hit 1990, you really start to hear it. So what's the reaction to people that you've played this to? What, what have they said and done? Well, I think a lot of them, um, you know, it starts in 1880. So for the first half of the composition, anyway, it's pretty even. You know, I think people get a little lulled. Um, and to cause some complacency, but then, then you notice they start listening harder. And again, in the last 20 years or so, then their eyes open up a little bit, they turn their head a little, like, wow. Yeah, a lot like reading the data, I gotta tell you, because you're snoozing through some of the data. And I'm just being <laughs> honest at some point. All right, Mark Machetti, thank you so much. Scientific American, important stuff you do. Don't forget to pick up the uh, July issue of Scientific American on newsstands right now, or you can do what we do. Uh, we just run over at scientificamerican.com uh, for the latest on science news. Read them, read them, read them. It's fantastic stuff.